What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And if you watched our last video of me and my friends running the high watermark trail through the Ozark National Forest, you saw that we did over 44 water crossings, some of them quite deep and countless mud holes on that trip. And I got asked a lot in the comments through Instagram, Facebook, you know, what type of maintenance do I do on the Gladiator when I get back home from a trip like that, you know, things to check to make sure water didn't get in certain places, things to clean after mud holes like that, because maintaining your rig after a trip is one of the key things you can do to make sure that it stays reliable when you're out on the trail. The last thing you want is to come back from a trip, not clean things up and then let grit and grime or water in places just sit there and eat away at your your bushings and you know impact your differentials and maybe even your engine so that's what we're gonna walk through and i'm gonna show you on this video ozark overland adventures is proudly supported by the more expo the midwest's only indoor event for adventure travel enthusiasts artemis overland hardware they have the passion and knowledge to ensure that your next outdoor experience is more than a camping trip, it's an adventure. And Long Creek Overland, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Now the very first thing that I do when I get home, sometimes even on my way home, after dealing with a lot of mud, is wash the underside of my Jeep off. Now, a lot of times I don't necessarily care about the body, and all the mud that's gotten up here on the doors, the hood, and, and everywhere else up here, because mud up here is not going to mess up anything. It's you know, I mean, just to be honest, sometimes you you want to drive it to work on Monday and let all your friends see you know how much fun you had over the weekend. But it is critical that you wash the underside of your vehicle. Make sure that you spray off all of the bushings, all of the joints, your drive shaft, your wheel assemblies. Um, all your suspension components, anything that's got a bushing or a joint um, or anything that moves around a lot, make sure that you clean it off. So the very first place that I go, like I said, sometimes before I even get home or on the way home is to a car wash to use the good pressure sprayer to spray off the underside. Now I don't use soap and everything for that, but I just make sure I spend a good amount of time spraying off all the dirt and all the grit and all the grime because i've still got some on my wheel here and if you can see that very well but that's a, a very fine dirt it's a very fine grit that i mean if that stuff gets in your bushings stays in your bushings that will eat away at your suspension components and it's not going to hurt you you know, next week or maybe even next month, but slowly but surely down the road, if you've got a Jeep like this with a solid front axle, I mean, it's a good chance you're gonna develop death wobble from worn out bushings. Um, definitely gonna impact your steering. If you've got wheel hubs and stuff that's gotten mud and stuff inside of them, it's gonna wear those out a lot faster. And you're just gonna have to deal with stuff a lot sooner than if you had cleaned it really well. So a good thorough cleaning under the vehicle is number one. Number two, if you went through deep water crossings and water did make its way into your vehicle. Now I was very happy with my Gladiator. The door seals did an excellent job of keeping water from coming inside the Gladiator and getting the carpets and everything all wet. Uh, that was not the case with my previous JK. Anytime I went through a deep water crossing, water would come in and I'd have to deal with them when they when I got home. Um, if you watched the video, you know that my friend Robert did not have um, a, such a good experience with water getting inside his vehicle. He got a lot of water inside his 4Runner. So if that happens, you know, when you get home, remove your floor mats. If you can remove the carpet, I mean, that's best if you have the ability to do that. If not, on a bright, sunshiny day, uh, you know, just open your open your doors so air can get in here. If you've got a fan, like a box fan or maybe an articulating fan, 
put that on a, on a chair or something right here and just let it constantly be blowing air over the carpets. That will help them dry really fast. That'll prevent mold and mildew from, from setting up in there. And drying out those carpets is going to be um, important. There have been times when I have not dried out my carpets very well and you just get that smell inside your vehicle. That's, that, you know, that's not a, a good, pleasant smell to have of, of that moldy carpet smell. So if you do go through a deep water crossing or a deep mud hole and you do get water inside on your carpets, make sure you dry those out thoroughly as soon as you get home. It's always a good idea just to open your hood and look for anything that's out of the ordinary. Excess mud, pools of water up here. Um, you know, I don't think there's any chance that water would actually get in the engine or in the transmission, but never hurts to check. Um, you know, unless you are in deep water and just stuck there for a long period of time, it's not something that you really need to worry about but never a bad idea to just check, make sure the oil is clean after a trip. And that looks, that looks really good. So no, no issues there. And if you can check your transmission, uh, definitely check your transmission fluid as well. Uh, on the JLs and JTs with the eight speed automatic transmission, there's no dipstick for me to check transmission levels. It is a sealed, uh, sealed transmission. So I can't check it even if I wanted to. And probably the most important thing to check after any trip that involves water crossings and deep mud is your differentials. Because um, if anything is likely to get water in there, it's going to be your diffs. Whether you have independent suspension on the front or and solid axles in the rear, full um, solid axles like a Jeep has, check your differential fluids. There is always vent tubes for them. A lot of times if you have not extended them, uh, they will be below the water line. Now they're designed to keep water out, but I don't trust that. So after every trip that involves deep water, definitely check your diffs. So there's two ways to check your diff fluid and I'm gonna do both. But first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open the fill line to check the oil. Now, you know, if you remember from science, oil floats on top of water. So I want to check this part and just check the oil to see really the color and consistency of it. And I wanna make sure I don't just get the whole lot down here. There we go. All right, so what I'm looking for is something of a chocolate milk color. And as you can see, I don't know if that'll focus on that. One focus, there we go. Um, that actually looks pretty good. It feels, it feels good, it's not brown. I definitely need to change my diff fluid from my gear, from my gear change. Um, it's just, it's just time to do that, so. But it's not, it's not that chocolate milkshake brown color that you would see if there was water in the diff. So that's a good sign. All right, the other thing you can check is just very, very carefully remove the drain plug. And I don't wanna drain the oil out of this. I just wanna see if water comes out because you know water will settle to the bottom, the oil will float on top. So the very first thing that will come out of this, if there's any water in here, it's going to be water. I just want see what comes out oh, nope all right that's just oil perfect 
that's what we wanted. All right, let's put that back in. I don't want to drain the oil at all. I just wanted to check it. Yeah, that looks good. It is cold, so the oil is quite thick, but there we go. Now I can get a good look at this oil that's on the bottom, and that is, that's in good shape. So yay, the front diff is fine. Now I need to clean that up. All right, that looks good. Yeah, that looks, that looks real good. Real happy with that. The drain plug for the back is on the side here instead of on the bottom. Huh. Let's see if any water drains out of this at all. Dust, nope, that's good. Yeah, that's real good. No water at all, perfect. Yeah, that's what I want to see. No water at all. So our diffs are in good shape. It's also a good idea after you get back from any wheeling trip, just, you know, take a look at your suspension components. Look at your control arms. Look at your shocks. Look at your, your track bar up front and just, you know, make sure everything's tight. Maybe even take a torque wrench and make sure nothing got loose at all. Anything you do like that is just gonna make sure everything is in tip top shape and you don't have any issues that are gonna come back to haunt you later on down the road. At, at least you hope not. Well, honestly, that's it. There's, there's not a lot that you have to do. Now, if you find issues, obviously, then you have to deal with those. If you have water inside your rig, you gotta take the time to, to dry them out. If you find water in your diffs, you gotta take the time to change your diff oil and you know that sort of thing. But, I mean, honestly, as long as you're not just sitting in deep water, like stuck, not moving, and you know, you're moving well through water crossings, you've got a nice bow wake, um, I don't think you're going to have many problems, but always best to check as soon as you get home, especially your differentials. If there was water in the rear differential and I left it unchecked, I mean, that could potentially lead to a rear diff failure and breaking, uh, you know, uh, a, a bearing, breaking a, a seal in there and causing catastrophic issues in the axle housing. And that is what we do not want, especially if we're on another trip away from towns. You know, those tofies get real expensive. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you've got any other questions, put them in the comments and be glad to help out any way I can. Check out our Patreon if you, you know, want to help support this channel, uh, get access to our GPS data and all of our routes, waypoints, that sort of thing. Longcreekoverland.com for all of our Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise. And you know, like, subscribe, all that other YouTube love. And anyway, I, I do hope this was helpful. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.